Hello everybody. Um, this is a video on chapter two, question number 28. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to create um, the T accounts uh, from transactions. So reading from the first transaction, it says Casey Spade owner invested $100,750 cash in the company in exchange for common stock. So the two T accounts that we need to create is we need to make one for cash and then we need to make another T account for common stock. Now Casey Spade invested $100,750 um, into the company. So cash is an asset. That asset increased. And in order to increase an asset, we need to debit it. So we're going to debit that $100,750. Now, the other account we have is common stock. Common stock is an equity account, and that equity account also increased. It is a credit to increase an equity account. So we're going to increase that equity account $100,750. And I'm going to put an A beside each of them to signify them. The second transaction, the company purchased office supplies of for $1,250 in cash. So we have cash again, and we'll have another account for office supplies. Now, the company paid out $1,250 for cash for those office supplies. Cash is an asset. And the cash decrease, so in order to decrease an asset, we're going to have a credit. So we're going to credit the account $1,250. And office supplies is also an asset, but it increased. And so in order to increase an asset, we're going to have a debit of $1,250. Second, um, the company purchased $10,000. Fifty dollars of of office equipment on a on credit. So we're going to have two accounts: office equipment and we also have another account, which is accounts payable, or I'm going to abbreviate this with AP for the credit charge. So office equipment. The company received office equipment, so office equipment went up. Office equipment is an asset account. In order to increase an asset account, you must debit it. So we're going to debit the office equipment account, $10,050. On the other hand, um, the company bought this on credit. So credit increase, and the credit account Credit is a liability or accounts payable is a liability. In order to increase a liability, you need to credit it. There we go. Fourth transaction. The company received $15,500 cash as fees for services provided to a customer. So our two accounts here are going to be in a revenue account. We'll just say revenue and cash account. Now, cash in the company increased by fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. Cash is a is a uh, asset, so we're going to have cash increase by fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. On the other side of this transaction is revenue and revenue increased also 
And so in order to increase a revenue account, you must credit it. So we're going to credit it also $15,500. E. The company paid $10,050 cash to settle the accounts payable for the office equipment or purchase in transaction C. So they paid out cash, so cash in the company decreased. Cash is an asset. In order to decrease an asset, you must credit it. So we're going to credit cash, $10,050. And then also we had a transaction for accounts payable. Accounts payable was decreased because we paid off the account. And it was um, and in order to decrease a, an accounts payable account. Accounts payable is a liability account. In order to decrease it, you need to debit it. So we're going to debit it for the amount of $10,050. F. The company billed a customer $2,700 as fees for services provided. Now since we're using accrual accounting, we're going to be able to book those fees as, um, as revenue. So our revenue account increased by $2,700. In order to increase a revenue account, you must credit it. So that will be an increase of two thousand seven, a credit of two thousand seven hundred dollars. And now we didn't collect the money, but we billed them. So we call that accounts receivable, or my abbreviation is AR. So we are going to debit the accounts receivable account for the same amount of money, which would be $2,700. Accounts receivable is an asset account, and that asset account needed to be increased. In order to increase an asset account, you need to debit it. Next, we have the company paid $1,225 cash for the monthly rent. Cash went out of the company, so in order to decrease cash, and cash is an asset account, so in order, in order to decrease an asset account, you need to credit it. So we're going to credit the account $1,225. And they paid off rent. So rent expense is an expense account. In order to increase the expense account, because that's the amount they paid out, you need to debit that account for $1,225. Um, next, the company collected $1,125 cash as partial payment for the accounts receivable created in transaction F. So they collected that cash. So cash in the company went increased. Cash is an asset account. In order to increase an asset account, you need to debit it. So we are going to debit cash for the amount of $1,125. Now, um, they also paid off their accounts receivable. So we need to, accounts receivable account went decreased. We need to credit that accounts receivable account because it's an asset. In order to decrease an asset account, you need to credit it. The final transaction, the company paid $10,000 cash in dividends to Spade, the shareholder. So when the company paid out that $10,000, that was in cash. Cash decreased as an account. Cash is an asset account. In order to decrease an asset account, you need to credit it, the account. And the last account that needs to be entered is the dividend account. And that account increased. In order to increase a dividend account, you need to debit that in, in that dividend account.
The final step in this process is that we need to summarize these accounts. So we're going to take the sum of the debits and we're going to minus them to the sum of the credits. And then whatever side is the larger, that's where we'll put it. So let me start with accounts receivable to give you an easy, um, easy account to see how this works. So if you took $2,700 debit and minus that to $1,125 credit, you get $1,575. Now, because the debits are larger than the credits, that is a $1,575 debit. Now, to go on with cash, which is the larger, if you summarize these accounts, the debits are larger, and the summary will be $94,850. Common stock, because there's only one transaction, there will be a credit of $100,750. Accounts payable, since the debits and the credits are equal, then it would be zero. Office supplies has a debit balance of $1,250. Revenue, if you summarize the revenue, has a credit balance of $18,200. Rent expense has a debit of $1,225. Office equipment has a debit of $10,050. And finally, dividends has a debit of $10,000. I hope this helps.